Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. CNN helps radical groups censor racist Facebook comments like All Lives Matter and I Don't See Color. CNN wrote an article advertising and glorifying a group of self-proclaimed white allies. This is a group comprised of 100-plus white people who have made it their goal to filter out racist comments against black people on Facebook. And what are some of the racist comments they filter? All Lives Matter and I Don't See Color. White Nonsense Roundup is a social media watchdog group with about 100 white volunteers. Its goal, to relieve people of color from the emotional labor of engaging with a person's racist or racially insensitive thoughts, writes CNN. Say, a person of color makes a post about Black Lives Matter. Then others respond with ignorant or offensive comments. That person can tag White Nonsense Roundup to snatch some edges, or, better put, to educate people with context and fact-based views. Think of it like roadside assistance for social media debates you're tired of having, writes CNN. When a volunteer receives a tag notification, they read through the conversation in question and spend time figuring out the best approach. This one dialogue can last a volunteer's entire two-hour shift or it could be one of several conversations they tackle, writes CNN. Volunteers pretty much see the same well-trodden claims or ideas time and time again in some form or another, Kempton said. There are some old standbys like, I'm not racist because I don't see color, or, well, I don't personally act racist. More specific topics also get trotted out, cultural appropriation isn't real, I don't have white privilege because of, X, why is it always about race? And the particularly thorny refrain, all lives matter. It says, why is CNN advertising these insane people? Chris Matthews calls Trump's Israel decision the new Benghazi, video. Liberals have had a truly disgusting response to Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. They have defended radical Muslims and insulted Jews and Christians. However, MSNBC's Chris Matthews had one of the strangest responses. He called this decision the new Benghazi. Where are we going to be now for the next couple of months with the Arab Islamic world which is a billion people? In places where we're vulnerable. We're much more vulnerable than Israel. We don't have a wall, whined Matthews. By the way. Are we spending more money on embassy security despite all this Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi? Are we doing any more to protect our troops out there? Asked Matthews. And you mentioned Benghazi, to help people visualize what the stakes are here. Benghazi was part of a wave of protests around compounds around the world. A dozen plus. In some cases people went over the fence. And so you're really playing with fire here. That's what we're talking about as potential Benghazi, responded guest Michael Crowley. Matthews also insulted Christians and said that Trump's decision was really about Roy really Moore. Don't think this isn't related to Alabama next week. It is related. Because it's the Christian evangelicals down there with their crazy ideas about Israel which is, I don't know, mythical. They don't understand the situation over there, how tricky it is ethnically and tribally. They don't care because it's a religious belief. Trump is playing into that this week you watch him, said Matthews. Wow. Watch Bernie Sanders say that President Trump is done for now that Franken resigned. Now that Al Franken has resigned over his sexual harassment scandals, Bernie Sanders thinks that President Trump will be next. We have a President of the United States who acknowledged on a tape widely seen all over the country that he's assaulted women, so I would hope maybe the President of the United States might pay attention of what's going on and also think about resigning, said Sanders. What I worry about right now, as we speak, 
in restaurants and in offices all over this country where you have bosses who are not famous, there is harassment of women and women are being intimidated. We need a cultural revolution in this country, said Sanders. However, a few weeks ago, when Sanders was asked about Bill Clinton's sexual assaults, Sanders said that what happened in the past shouldn't matter. Your colleague Democratic Senator Kirsten Gillibrand said this week that Bill Clinton should have resigned after it came out that he had an inappropriate sexual relationship with a White House intern. Do you agree with Senator Gillibrand? Asked Jake Tapper. Look, I don't think that at this moment our goal is to look back 20 years or 30 years. Our goal is to go forward, and our goal is to understand that we have a real crisis in this country today within the political world, within the corporate world, within the media world where women are being harassed every single day, responded Sanders. Is he a huge hypocrite? James Woods eviscerates Nancy Pelosi for spreading fake news on concealed carry bill. The House of Representatives just voted in favor of the Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act of 2017. In response, Nancy Pelosi immediately went to Twitter and lied about the bill. Inviting violent criminals to carry concealed weapons doesn't save lives. Inviting domestic abusers to carry concealed weapons doesn't save lives. Inviting convicted stalkers to carry concealed weapons doesn't save lives. Yet the ad house GOP just voted to do exactly that hashtag stop CCR, tweeted Pelosi. However, according to the bill, violent criminals, domestic abusers, and convicted stalkers are not legally allowed to possess a firearm of any kind. So basically, her tweet was one big lie. People immediately called her out on Twitter. Honestly do even you cringe when you lie with such alacrity? Hashtag Botox Bonehead, tweeted conservative actor James Woods. This is patently false. Existing Law 18 U.S.C. S. 922 bars violent criminals and domestic abusers from legal carry or purchase. You are attempting to deny rights based on false claims. Hashtag 2 A Hashtag Concealed Carry Reciprocity, tweeted Dane Aloche. The House did nothing of the sort tweeted Charles C. W. Cook. Anyone convicted of a felony or domestic violence-related misdemeanor is already prohibited from legally owning or possessing firearms, let alone legally carrying them, tweeted Stephen Kotovsky. Do you think Pelosi even cares that she is lying to the American people? John Conyers shared inside information on the horrific murder case after a woman turned down his advances. Oftentimes, a sexual predator will try to threaten his victim to prevent her from coming forward. Democratic Senator John Conyers gave one of his victims the creepiest threat ever after she rejected his sexual advances. Courtney Morse, now 36, described how Conyers went after her as a 20-year-old college student. She accused Conyers of resigning to escape an investigation. It feels like an easy way out. He doesn't have to face an investigation now. If he is vehemently denying he did anything, then it's not about reconciling the issue. It's about protecting his legacy, said Morse. She then described her creepy experience with Conyers. Conyers drove her home one night, he began propositioning her and making moves. She rejected. That's when Conyers brought up murdered former federal intern Chandra Levy. He said he had insider information on the case. I don't know if he meant it to be threatening, but I took it that way. I got out of the car and ran, said Morse. I thought it was odd that he was driving home an intern. It was out of the way, so it wasn't convenient, she said. She described how Conk made another move a few weeks later. She had always felt intimidated by his vague threat. James Rosen exposes what Obama did to silence media that is far worse than anything Trump has done. CNN and other mainstream media outlets like to claim that President Trump is attacking the First Amendment whenever he calls them fake news. However, Obama has done much more to harm the media than simply calling out fake news. 
Fox News James Rosen was once named a criminal co-conspirator and spied on by the Department of Justice during the Obama administration. He exposed what Obama did. I can bring a unique perspective to this because of my experiences under the Obama administration, explained Rosen. And to my eye, nothing that this president has done to or with the news media, at least yet, even remotely approaches, in seriousness, in nature, that which the Obama administration did to and with the news media, said Rosen. I think a lot of my colleagues in the news media, people I admire, people I enjoy the company of, have come to a conclusion in their own minds that to report objectively on Donald Trump is, in a sense, from where they sit, to collude in fascism somehow, said Rosen. Even CNN's Jake Tapper seemed to agree with Rosen's point. In 2014 Tapper pointed out that the Obama administration has used the Espionage Act to go after whistleblowers who leaked to journalists, more than all previous administrations combined. Morning Joe is mad at Trump for not making Islamic terrorists more mainstream. At one point in his professional life, Joe Scarborough was an even-keeled, sensible Republican congressman competently representing the interests of his constituents in Florida. This Joe Scarborough hardly resembles the unhinged leftist who now co-hosts MSNBC's Morning Joe. On a recent episode of his show, Scarborough brought on as his guest a Muslim feminist named Zainab Zalbi and they both criticized President Donald Trump's decision to move the U.S. Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. Said Salbi, first, we have to remember that actually, it was President Obama who did acknowledge Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. He just never activated the moving of the embassy to Jerusalem and he didn't do that for security reasons. It is not an easy job to move the embassy to Jerusalem. This actually jeopardizes the security, well-being of our personnel. So, one thing. She then claimed, second, second thing is here, a lot of Israelis are against what President Trump said actually. Joe agreed with Zainab, and then got angry with President Trump for not making Middle Eastern terrorists more mainstream. Said Scarborough, but everything I always did was about the deal, to push, to pressure, to bring the two sides together. And if the Palestine, which, by the way, the Palestinians at some point need to move to a point where they recognize Israel's right to exist. They're not gonna do that now. He then added ridiculously, while pounding on his desk, you have Hamas, who's been in a weakened state for years, and every time Hamas has their back up against the wall, it happened a few years ago, every time Hamas has its back up against the wall and maybe becoming more mainstream so we can bring peace to the region. The United States or Israel does something that feeds into their power, strengthens their base, and allows them to keep saying, we will never recognize Israel's right to exist. Do you think it's nuts that Scarborough is mad at Trump for terrorists not being mainstream enough?